Hello YouTube, this is Captain Ball again with another interesting story to tell about firearms history. It's about this rifle. This was made in Germany in the end of the 19th century by J.P. Sauer & Zon, a company still existing today. It was established in 1751 and it is still making guns. It's a good achievement, so let's check the history of this company first. Zul is located in central Germany, Thuringia. This ancient city is often known as the Waffenstadt, a title well deserved by making firearms for many, many centuries. The origins of the Zauer firearms making family fades in the past, but we do know that they moved from Nuremberg to Zul in the first half of the 18th century and brought their extensive gun making knowledge with them. The first mention of the Zauer name is from 1753, when a fire destroyed most of the gun making facilities of the city and the most important families united for reconstruction. During the Seven Years' War, the city was heavily involved in making guns for the Prussian Kingdom. In 1764, the Zauer name is mentioned again when General Sachs, commander of the Saxon cavalry, ordered firearms directly from Lorenz Zauer. The company remained a family business, but went through many partnerships and transformations until in 1873, Johann Paul Zauer and his sons Lorenz and Rudolf established the J.P. Zauer & Zong Company, a brand that still exists today under the umbrella of Blazer Group. So ladies and gentlemen, let's check now the most important features of this beautiful historical rifle. The type of short hunting rifle like this, Sauer Kiplauf, was called Birschbüchse. Probably the best way to translate this to English is stalking rifle, marking the intended hunting method for these noble arms. Zauer was advertising this rifle in two versions. The basic versions had octagonal barrel and was sold for 100 race marks. The premium version had round barrel, selected woodstock, checkered pistol grip, folding peep sight on the tank and was sold for 150 race marks. These rifles were also available in several contemporary magnum calibers, including the popular Africa calibers. They were all equipped with set triggers. The trigger in the back sets the system, so with a little force the front trigger fired the gun, improving accuracy. The weight of the trigger pull could be adjusted with a little screw. The sights of the rifle are quite interesting. The folding peep sight in the tank can be adjusted for elevation. The leaf rear sight can be set for two ranges. The front sight, made of German silver, is called Bierschkorn, offering a beautiful contrast on the game even in low light conditions. The rifle is light and elegant, nothing is overdone, nothing is too much. Comes from an age when practice was much more important than design and look. All the wood metal fits are still perfect and the work of the action is just excellent. The gun was designed by hunters for hunters and was meant to serve generations. Something that is nearly missing from today's firearms industry. Even if the rifle was manufactured in the 19th century, they still played an important part for safety. The hammer cannot go forward until the trigger is pulled. That's an easy and very safe mechanical device. The caliber of the rifle is 11mm Mauser or 43 Mauser or as we call it very accurately the 11.15x60R cartridge which used to be the cartridge of the first military bolt action rifle of the German Empire. The rifling of this bore is quite special. It was designed by Alexander Henry, the famous Scottish gun maker located in Edinburgh. It has a 1 turn in 20 inches twist and the dimensions of the grooves and lens are a bit different from the original military Mauser rifles. The Zauer company was well known for their excellent cast steel barrels, fine tuned for maximum accuracy and strength. The same system was used for double rifles as well and with a little modification for drilling combination guns. My first reload replicated the original cartridge of the 1871 Mauser rifle, but was not accurate at all. I had to reduce the powder charge to 60 grains of 2F Swiss powder to arrive to a 10-15cm group at 50 meters. This is what you see now. 
The muzzle velocity was 383 meters per sec, enough for hunting. My goal for this rifle was to have a group within 5 cm at 50 meters and to be able to fire 5 6 shots without losing accuracy. Well, to achieve this, I still had to fine tune the charge. The 11mm Mauser cartridge is an interesting cartridge and an important cartridge in firearms history, so let's check now the history of this cartridge first. This cartridge was developed for the first bolt action rifle of the Mauser brothers, designed for the Army trials of 1871. The rifle proved to be superior to any rifles in competition, with a little modification to the safety system. This was the first German military rifle to fire a self-contained center fire cartridge. The charge was 4.9 grams of black powder and a paper patch 25 gram lead bullet. In 1884, with the acceptance of the 71 per 84 repeating rifle, a new version of the cartridge was introduced. To increase the safety of the tube magazine, a flat nose bullet was introduced instead of the original round nose projectile. Black powder cartridges are funny things because you can reload them without using any kind of specialized tools. I am going to show you my process, but please don't forget that this only works for safety reason with black powder. Never ever do this with nitrocellulose smokeless powders. The process starts with hammering the spent percussion cap out of the primer pocket. For this purpose, any M-priming pin will work fine. Now it is time to open the mouth of the case, so it will accept easily the lead bullet. Now it is time to reprime the case. Always wear safety glasses and do it on a soft surface like a wooden table. Now I'm charging my case with 60 grains of 1.5F Swiss powder. This charge will not fill the case completely, so you will need some filler as well. There must not be an air gap between bullet and powder, so I'm adding corn wet as a filler. The next step is adding a 2mm thick carton wad, this will protect the base of the bullet upon firing. And now it is time to press the bullet firmly on the wad. And for a single shot rifle you don't need any kind of crimping. Please note that this reloading method is not safe for repeating rifles. Setting the black powder charge of an old cartridge is time consuming and sometimes annoying. But with patience, all good bores will find a good load.
Well, the load seems to be ready. All shots within 5 cm group. The next problem to overcome was the lack of cartridge cases. And for solving this matter, I needed a reloading die set strongly. Well, these cartridges are not in production anymore, so that means you have to make your own, which means you have to get brass first. They were manufactured by Hornabel and they were manufactured by Bertrand Brass, but they are really hard to get in my country. But I have 4590 cases, which can be reformed into the 11mm Mauser cartridge case. So let's check the process I do it in the next video part. Let me talk a bit about the history of this particular rifle, because it's interesting. It is very well connected to the Hungarian history. You know, Hungary is in between empires, so which means that in every 50 years, 60 years, an empire comes, occupies the country and takes everything. During the Second World War, there were two occupations, occupations here. The first one was done by the Germans, the second one by the Russians. I don't know which occasion was the time when that noble family who owned this rifle just tried to hide this rifle in their uh, little hunting lodge or hunting castle, where it stayed for nearly 50 years. Around 25 years ago, it was discovered and it was delivered to the Hungarian police and from the Hungarian police it went to a Hungarian hunter, an old Hungarian hunter. And I'm very grateful for that man. He's not alive anymore, he's dead. I think uh, probably the owner died a few years ago, one or two years ago. But I'm very grateful to that man because he did not alter anything, he did not modify anything on this rifle. He did not put a scope on it, he left the open sights there. No modern style stock on it, so I'm really happy for that man. The final stage of reforming the 4590 cases was to fire them from my chamber. I knew it cannot be accurate, but it is interesting to see the result. it works for sure. This is how the first so this is how the cartridge case looks like after the first firing. This is the original case made by Bertrand Brass, already fired in my chamber. And this is my reformed 4590 case, also fired once in the chamber. Now this is ready for reloading. The German companies were always very precise on gun markings and in fact this rifle can tell you a lot of stories if we just remove the barrel and see what kind of markings it has. So let's disassemble the rifle. There are a lot of valuable information hidden on the breech of the rifle. First of all we get a load suggestion. It says Patrone 11.15 by 60, this is the caliber with 4.75 grams of SP or Schwarzpulver or black powder with 21.7 gram blei or lead bullet. We can also find the production date of the rifle here which says it was manufactured in 1896 in February or 02. This system was considered one of the strongest from the Kiplauf designs as it was closing in three positions one, two and three. So this rifle could be ordered in any kind of magnum calibers available by those times, which meant it was available in the most popular Africa calibers as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the final phase of test firing the Zauer Kiplauf rifle. I'm going to first fire my cartridges that I loaded into the reformed cases. You have seen the process in the, in the other video part or in the other video. Now, we have a good load here, we have a good cartridge case here, we have a fine bullet here. Let's see how it will perform at 50 meters.
Let's check it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is not bad at all. Out of the six shots I fired, I have five in the size of a 10 ring, which is, for hunting, it is just excellent. You don't really need much more than this at 50 meters. So ladies and gentlemen, now the testing of the Sauer rifle is over. And uh, what else can we say? We have the cartridge, we have the rifle. Now in the next video, we can go to hunt with this rifle. And what was in interesting for me to see during this process is that uh, even if you don't have the proper sizing dies and you don't have the proper reloading dies, you can still manually reload these old black powder cartridges to achieve decent accuracy. In fact, the accuracy of my manual reload was nearly just as the same as the as the as the cartridges uh, as the accuracy of the cartridges that I reloaded with using the proper uh, dies. And this is what I really love about these old black powder cartridges. The Zauer Birschbüchse or Stalking Rifle was an excellent research project. I enjoyed every bit of this two months period. Now I can't wait to hunt wild boars with this old pal. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. You have been watching the Cap Handle YouTube channel. If you wish and if you can, you can support me on Patreon. You can find the link under this video. Or you can also support me by buying our authentic American Civil War percussion revolver cartridge boxes, which are available in our eBay store in various types. Please also don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like what I do. And you know, until next time, stay cool and keep your powder dry.